Medistand. Understanding Medicine. I am Professor Aziz Rahman, and today I am going to discuss about this common condition called Cushing syndrome. And previously in my lectures, I have already discussed basic concepts about adrenal gland and Addison disease, the hypoadrenalism. Today we are going to talk about this condition where there is excess of corticosteroid. Uh, definition, it is the constellation of certain clinical features and laboratory abnormalities due to excessive glucocorticoid effect. Now, this glucocorticoid effect means it could be any glucocorticoid, not necessarily the endogenous production, and if it is endogenous production, it could be due to multiple reasons or many times it is exogenous uh, prescribed medicine or patient taking for some uh, reasons. So whenever there is excessive glucocorticoid effect, it is likely to result in certain clinical features and laboratory abnormalities. Collectively, this would be called Cushing syndrome. Classification of Cushing syndrome First of all, iatrogenic Cushing syndrome. Now, why do I list iatrogenic? First of all, because that, in my experience, is the commonest. Steroids are prescribed for very good reason. They are life-saving drugs. For many diseases, corticosteroids are the mainstay of treatment. So, those patients are likely to develop Cushing syndrome feature. We actually explain to them that this is the downside of the treatment. You would uh, develop these features. But in our country, many times corticosteroids are prescribed uh, without any reason and also by the unqualified quacks. So, uh, even if patient does not give you the history of corticosteroid intake, even if patient's prescription does not include corticosteroid, you need to suspect if the clinical features are suggested. Cushing disease is a specific type of Cushing syndrome where the problem is a microadenoma and the pituitary gland. Since this microadenoma is functional, though physically in small, small in size, but it is producing ACTH and ACTH is stimulating both adrenals, which is causing this Cushing, Cushing disease. Cushing disease is the commonest cause of endogenous uh, glucocorticoid excess once you have ruled out iatrogenic Cushing syndrome. Adrenal tumors is also likely uh, if one of the adrenals or both the adrenals they develop a tumor and if the tumor is functional it would produce excessive amount of glucocorticoids and that would also result in Cushing syndrome. Occasionally a malignant tumor anywhere in the body uh, typically carcinoma bronchus but theoretically any malignancy have the, may have the ability to produce ACTH and they may actually produce ACTH in extremely large quantities and may stimulate normal adrenals and there may be production of cortisone, corticosteroids in very large quantities resulting in Cushing syndrome. So there are four major causes. The commonest is iatrogenic. So whenever a patient comes to you with typical features, I think my advice is you first rule out iatrogenic Cushing syndrome. If that is not the case, then you go further and do the appropriate test. Clinical features are some very important features and uh, symptoms are vague and multiple. There may be weight gain and there may be weakness. And there may be puffiness of the face and the face is typically described as moon shaped face you can see from this picture uh, like bloated like there is edema there is addition of uh, where there's some deposition of fat so this is typically described as moon shaped face but then there are other features like gynecomastia and these tri which i will explain shortly Physical signs, central obesity. Now, central obesity means there is accumulation of fat around our waist. 
we all know that central obesity is otherwise very common so you can't really suspect Cushing syndrome just on the basis of this observation but if it is combined with muscle wasting and weakness there is thinning of the skin and there is a hirsutism and uh, especially in women if there is growth of hair on the moustache and the beard and that may suggest uh, the presence of Cushing syndrome this is because of the excess of androgens then purple stri those who are obese and especially those who have lost their weight after uh, uh, they, were, they were obese they lost some weight they may have these stri but in Cushing syndrome these stri are very typical purple in color and they are present in the abdomen they may be present in the axillary and in their arms so pink colored uh, stri when present in a person who has not lost significant weight in the recent past would suggest Cushing syndrome and psychological changes may also be there we know one of the side effects of the corticosteroid is psychosis so these patients may have some psychological symptoms also complication uh, Cushing because glucocorticoid they can produce diabetes especially those patients who were already prone but they once they develop Cushing syndrome they may develop frank diabetes glucocorticoids may cause osteoporosis they may cause hypertension and they may also cause poor wound healing so they may also be the clinical features of Cushing there are two types of laboratory tests some are very specific that means you can base your diagnosis on those tests and they are actually hormone related but then there are some non-specific laboratory abnormalities which you may see in some other diseases also and you have to consider other possibilities uh, serum cortisol and ACTH if done together and I, I, I discussed this in my earlier lecture on hypoadrenalism that it is best to order serum cortisol and ACTH together because that will give you the best diagnosis and they should be done either in the morning before breakfast about 8.30 or in the evening best is morning in the fasting state so uh, but it can be done in the evening also time must be specified it's not that you can do it anytime 24 hour urinary excretion is mostly not done in our practice because the combination of these two give you the diagnosis and 24 hour urinary excretion may be quite cumbersome but it may be useful because it gives you the 24 hours average value you know uh, all hormones are produced in the form of pulses or it is possible that when the sample was taken in the morning that patient was off pulse uh, in the nadir so that means you might actually miss the hypercortisolism uh, and patient may just show the normal cortisol because of this phenomenon so 24 hours urinary excretion is more likely to pick up hypercortisolism but it is slightly cumbersome test dexamethasone suppression test is very useful to detect Cushing syndrome uh, in its early phase because you know in any condition where there is excessive secretion uh, we try to suppress that excessive secretion to see uh, if there is any abnormality so dexamethasone suppression test is an attempt to suppress hypophysial adrenal axis to stop production of cortisol now in this case there are two types of uh, dexamethasone test i will shortly explain in my next slides but for now you just understand that dexamethasone is much sensitive test than serum cortisol and acth that means it will pick up the disease before serum cortisol and acth will become abnormal imaging test uh, if Cushing syndrome is suspected then you would like to know where the problem is is it in the adrenal gland or is it in the pituitary gland or is it some ectopic production so you will need imaging tests in the form of ultrasound CT scan MRI or body scans uh, ultrasound is of course very useful the first investigation 
because it is non-invasive, it is cheap, it is available everywhere and in case of adrenal tumor one can easily pick up the disparity in sizes and CT scan will further confirm ultrasound findings because ultrasound may miss small tumor and CT is uh, more sensitive and MRI is perhaps the best but uh, we, we start with ultrasound and then we go for CT or MRI. A pituitary MRI would be uh, done if you suspect Cushing disease. Uh, I will show you the algorithm when to suspect pituitary when you when you suspect pituitary microadenoma, and that is time when we consider pituitary MRI. XHS primarily to detect any malignancy. A carcinoma bronchus can produce uh, Cushing syndrome because it may produce excessive ACTH. Uh, and that may also be responsible for Cushing syndrome. These are non-specific abnormalities. Hypernatremia because glucocorticoids they retain sodium. It is easy to understand hypernatremia. Every patient may not have hypernatremia because they have expanded extracellular compartment also. So despite having increased sodium contents of the body, Serum uh, potassium, serum sodium may actually be within normal limits. Hypokalemia is another very important feature. If patient is not on any diuretic, patient is not on any potassium restricted diet and has unexplained hypokalemia, that should make you suspect that this patient may have Cushing syndrome. Metabolic alkalosis, another feature, uh, and hyperglycemia and or frank diabetes may be feature because these laboratory abnormalities are not specific to Cushing syndrome so I'm not going to spend uh, too much time here. Diagnosis of Cushing syndrome is made on the basis of clinical suspicion and lab evaluation and we'll see how do we do that. As I said earlier the best starting test is to do ACTH and cortisol and we discussed earlier also it is to be done in the morning at 8.30 in the fasting state. It can be done in the evening also, but best is morning. And I will let you think about these possibilities. What do you think if somebody has high ACTH and high cortisol? In the proper perspective, patient has clinical features of Cushing syndrome and you do these tests and ACTH is high and cortisol is high. Make a judgment. Where does ACTH come from? It normally comes from the pituitary. So the problem is likely to be in the pituitary. Another possible source of ACTH is a malignant tumor in the body. So there are two possibilities. Either there is hypersecretion from the pituitary indicating pituitary adenoma or an ectopic tissue, uh, usually a malignancy. In both cases, ACTH will stimulate adrenal gland and will produce cortisol in excessive quantities. So the two possibilities are Cushing disease, that means a tumor in the pituitary fossa and we will go for pituitary MRI. When you order pituitary MRI, you must specify that what you are suspecting, only then the radiologist will be able to focus on pituitary fossa and will give you the right diagnosis. If pituitary MRI is normal or otherwise you suspect some ectopic malignancy, then you have to go for body scan. You have to image various parts of the body, but most common site of malignancy responsible for Cushing syndrome is lung, lung cancer. So we would start with X-ray chest and if X-ray chest is abnormal, uh, we would proceed with CT scan or other imaging test. The second possibility, again I will give you a minute, a, a few seconds to think about this, ACTH is low and cortisol is high. Cortisol is high, that is what is producing Cushing syndrome, but ACTH is low. So that means, what do you think, ACTH is coming from the pituitary, do you think the problem is likely to be in the pituitary? No. It, in fact, it indicates that the pituitary is responding physiologically to an abnormally high cortisol level. So it is likely to be an autonomous adrenal tumor, usually unilateral or sometimes bilateral also. 
so adrenal tumor is producing cortisone in excessive quantities and that cortisone is actually inhibiting pituitary in a physiological way so ACTH is low this combination of low ACTH and high cortisol should raise the suspicion of adrenal tumor if that is the case then we should image the adrenal gland with ultrasound CT MRI or other tests and third possibility is in a patient with clinical suspicion of Cushing syndrome uh, ACTH is low and cortisol is also low now this is in fact the common situation what do you think how come you have this Cushing syndrome when both are low when cortisol is low because cortisol is not the only corticosteroid we have it is most likely to be an iatrogenic because iatrogenic uh, Cushing syndrome is caused by some non cortisol corticosteroids either dexamethasone or uh, prednisolone now these two uh, corticosteroids they have inhibitory effect on the pituitary so they will suppress ACT, ACTH production and then the endogenous production of cortisol will also be inhibited but dexamethasone which is taken exogenously that is producing iatrogenic uh, Cushing syndrome so this is important because in our country this is most likely condition now dexamethasone suppression test is two types this is overnight dexamethasone suppression test this is very convenient and easy to do and this will differentiate between physiological and pathological hypercortisolism so this is basically a screening test most probably you will have to go further with the uh, standard dexamethasone suppression test so in this test what we do is we give dexamethasone 1 milligram which is equivalent to two tablets at 11 pm and in the morning you estimate serum cortisol at 8 8 am next morning okay so if it is normalized previously of course you had estimated cortisol that was high so if high cortisol is normalized after overnight dexamethasone administration that means this hypercortisolism was physiological so patient is just going through some stress and that is responsible for hypercortisolism patient may not have Cushing disease or Cushing syndrome but if after overnight dexamethasone administration the serum cortisol remain elevated that would mean the patient has got pathological hypercortisolism that means Cushing syndrome patient would need further tests the standard dexamethasone suppression test to differentiate between various possibilities standard dexamethasone suppression test means you have you, you determine the cause of Cushing syndrome dexamethasone 0.5 milligram which is equivalent to one tablet is given six hourly for 48 hours and then you estimate serum cortisol at the end of the study in the morning at 8 a.m. If hypercortisolism is normalized, this would mean it is Cushing disease. That means the excess of ACTH was coming from the pituitary and that was causing hypercortisolism. If it was ectopic production, the ACTH is so much, is so massive that dexamethasone although that is going to suppress endogenous pituitary ACTH but the ectopic ACTH will not be suppressed so cortisol will remain high that would indicate that the source of ACTH is some ectopic tissue uh, usually a malignant tissue complications uh, there may be hypertension hypertension is otherwise also common in patient with Cushing syndrome the typical pattern is diastolic hypertension diabetes is also possible osteoporosis because of the fact of glucocorticoid there may be premature and accelerated uh, osteoporosis and infections are also common treatment some general measures we first of all ask a patient to restrict sodium intake that will correct hypertension that will correct hypernatremia to some extent 
because these patients have hypokalemia so we ask them to take some potassium supplement in the form of tablets or in the form of juices diuretic may be prescribed to get rid of this uh, hypernatremia and excess body water and antihypertensive may be indicated but main treatment would be to identify the diagnosis and correct it if patient is on steroids and if you your diagnosis is iatrogenic uh, Cushing syndrome then gradual tapering of steroid is necessary if possible now if patient is on corticosteroid for good reason then you just explain to the patient that this is the side effect of the drug which we have to accept but if patient is not taking steroid for good reason then we try to taper them off because patient has been taking steroids in large quantity for long it is possible that his hypophysial adrenal axis are suppressed once you withdraw steroid patient may develop Edisonian crisis so it has to be very very gradual process sometimes we have to give ACTH injection also to stimulate his adrenal glands so that once uh, steroids are taken off his adrenal will start functioning uh, if you make a diagnosis of Cushing disease uh, if the diagnosis is a microadenoma in the pituitary gland then ideal treatment is excision of pituitary microadenoma and there are two approaches one is transphenoidal surgery and this is actually very advanced surgery and there is not even a cut on your face or in your scalp so uh, uh, the pituitary is approached through transphenoidal approach and a microadenoma is removed and if patient is not suitable for this kind of surgery then gamma knife ablation is also possible now why i mentioned bilateral adrenalectomy and, and then strike it through because previously uh, it was not possible to diagnose microadenoma in the pituitary and it was not possible to remove it you know pituitary gland is just a pea sized gland and removing adenoma from that gland was not easy so somebody thought of bilateral adrenalectomy uh, of course it would end up having severe adrenal deficiency then steroids would be replaced so uh, this used to be the treatment now that we have this uh, possibility of removal of pituitary adenoma then i think bilateral adrenalectomy is just the treatment of pass caution when you remove pituitary adenoma ad the, the adrenal gland may just stop functioning because of the abnormal amount of ACTH uh, pituitary this uh, adrenals were hyperplastic but once that source of ACTH is taken off then patient may go into a dissonant crisis so one has to watch that if there is adrenal tumor excision of the adrenal tumor usually laparoscopically or sometime open surgery with open surgery again because the adrenal tumor was producing too much cortisol and that was inhibiting the ACTH so the rest of the functional adrenal gland was actually suppressed so once the tumor is removed then patient may end up in Edisonian crisis I think even before you start uh, before surgery is started one may be started on uh, steroid replacement therapy uh, to to avoid this adisonian crisis and then gradually tapered off if it is ectopic production excision of the tumor if possible sometime malignant tumor may be too advanced may be already metastasized so it may not be possible to excise but if possible then we try to remove that tumor again there is a risk of adisonian crisis all cases of Cushing syndrome once steroids are stopped or the source of steroids is taken off then there is possibility of a dissonant crisis and one must be prepared to handle that situation differential diagnosis the commonest differential diagnosis is simple obesity because none of the clinical feature of Cushing syndrome are very typical 
many people with simple obesity they have hypertension they have diabetes many people they have moon shaped face even without cushing syndrome so i think uh, just on the looks you do not diagnose if there is a possibility then you should go for the test then physiological hypercortisolism if your differential is based on serum cortisol then must consider physiological hypercortisolism prognosis if it is iatrogenic the prognosis is fair uh, if it is adrenal tumor and pituitary tumor uh, if removed successfully the tumors were benign and they were removed successfully then the prognosis may be good if the, it is cancer then usually the prognosis is bad because then uh, even if you remove the tumor then the, it is a cancer if it is metastasized the prognosis will be bad thank you very much uh, for bearing with me and this was the third of the series on um, adrenal diseases in the next lecture i'll see you with some other uh, topic thank you very much